we'll just keep it moving right here. All right, let's keep this moving, brothers and sisters. So that was, I guess we'll call the first one a flat earth disclaimer, right? A flat earth disclaimer, the plain truth about the plain earth, right? And in continuing, right, to um, articulate what is both um, testified, right, by the ancients, and we're looking at it still right here from a a a video that we had posted up last year called Flat Earth, How Ancients Knew, uh, How Ancient Egyptians and Hebrews Knew. And this um, uh, video has been reposted by um, a few others as Flat Earth Secrets Ancient Knew About Flat Earth. Now, as we mentioned before, in our view and from our reading and discerning of scripture that the the earth is not flat, flat. There are heights and there are depths. But what is clearly observable and, and testifiable within the ancient scrolls and the scriptures and also by our own observation is that the horizon is level. There's a level horizon, or we can say there's a flat horizon. It's actually, in a little more scrutinizing of scripture and also the available evidence, there is two horizons, right? There are two horizons. There are the east and this is, and the west, right? And we're in here in the western world in the western horizon. There's the east and there's the western horizon. Now, as we study the scriptures and as we recognize the fact that, um, Moshe, Moses was learned in all the, the wisdom, the chokma, right, of the Egypts, of the Bain uh, Mitzrayim, the Banai Mitzrayim, of the sons of, um, of, of Egypt. It's interesting when we start to compare, right, and contrast, right, compare and contrast. We did this with the Newt and the Geb, right, um, point of view and reference, and also seeing within Genesis or Bereshith how Adam was formed, or some would say reformed, but was Yatza, Yetza, from the Ophar or the Afar of the Aduma, the Aduma. So we have Adam, Aduma, right? So even within the word sound, we have that um, point of view and that, and that reference like Ish and Isha on that particular level. Now, when we look at Newt, right? According to the Banai Mitzrayim or the ancient um, Egyptians, Newt is arced over. Well, first of all, she is a she. This is interesting too. When we start to look at the particular gender references within the Shemitic scripture, the Afro-Shemitic scriptures, such as the, the Hebrew Bible. Also, when we look into the Ethiopic and the Ethiopic book of uh, Enoch, the Metzhafa Hanok, and also the Ethiopic book of Jubilee, of the Metzhafa Kufale, also known as Little Genesis. And we start to um, scrutinize these works and study these works and also, you know, um, look and listen to the research of other researchers, it is very interesting the evidence that actually proves that the earth is not a ball or ball. The earth is not a ball or a ball or a globe. The earth is not a globe, right? This is, this is the point that really we need to affirm. Now, whether we, um, agree with or we don't agree with a lot of the flat earth uh, speculation by some of those um, special interest groups. There are certain groups out there that are putting a put, put seeking to put out a particular um, flat earth view. Right. And even seeking to be very, um, you know, it's almost like a um, um, I can say almost, almost dicto uh, dictatorial in, 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 in this science and teaching. I think we need to recognize it is something that we all need to explore, right, for ourselves. But the main thing is to, to, um, uh, how can you say, to, to break ones out, right, of that deceived view that everything that we have been told about the heavens and the earth and the depths is actually what it is, right? Because we get to recognize from the scriptures and from Revelation in particular, just to refer to this, that that the old serpent, right, the, the, the dragon and the old serpent has deceived the whole world. Now, it might not seem 
so um, important, but it is something as as basic as whether the earth is a ball, whether the earth is flat or whether the earth is plain causes so much vehement resistance. You know, it's, it's, it's like one's one said you can't, you know, with once have bought into something that they have not even investigated. And this is probably the first time that maybe we all are really beginning to seriously scrutinize this and not saying that, well, you need to believe in ones are seeking to force one to say, well, the earth is flat. Well, is the earth flat? Right. Is, is it really flat? Is it flat, flat? I think we should look at the fact that it is not a planet. A planet is a wandering star. Even NASA admits in some of their um, once classified but but now released documents, I don't know whether through the WikiLeaks or Snowden or whatnot like that, a lot of these things got out there. And that makes sense why they were so upset, you know, with some of these whistleblowers and ones and ones leaking information because ones and ones working in these different intelligence agencies, right, just as regular people like you and me, you know, come across certain files and read and they say, what? You mean this is the truth of it? But but then they recognize they have to be partakers in lying and deceiving and this continued deception, right, of the of the populi or the populace or, or, or the people, right, humanity. Right. So much of this has gotten out and they have revealed that back in, I think, the 70s. Right. NASA has in its own documentation that the Earth is a non rotating Right. It's a non-rotating plane. Right. NASA document that I think a few documents that actually re- reveal that. I think it was in CDF, CDF, um, conspiracy dude fury. He has a particular vid or so. I think a recent, more recent video about the whole flat earth thing right there. Check that out. I think he also has that documentation. He references that documentation and gives like an on screen, um, kind of snapshot of that particular information. So ones and ones, you know, don't have to believe believe anything that we're saying, but go and search it out for yourself, right? Go and prove it for yourself. Anywhere that you stand on earth, especially at a certain height or an altitude, right? Whether it's on top of the roof of a building, you know, and if it's a pretty tall building and you look around, you look around, you look around, you look around, what do you observe, right? What is clearly observable, Right. When you look around, look around, look around, look around. Right. What do you observe when you look around, look around, look around, look around? The thing that you observe when you look around, look around, look around, look around is that the is that the earth. Right. Is not a ball. Right. That, that's the thing that you can clearly observe. See, here's what happens. People look up. Right. And when they look up, what you see is you see the arc of the firmament. Right. When you look up, you see the arc of the firmament. And when you're looking at the arc of the firmament, know this, that the ancients already saw it. Right. And they already scientifically in their own ancient scientific, you could say, um, expression sought to define it as newt. Right. Newt. Here we have the the waters above the firmament, right? And here we have the firmament. What is the firmament? Now we can go into the Hebrew. We've done this in previous vids, right? Going into the Hebrew of the heavens and hopefully we'll go over this again, right? Because this is, this is a really very interesting, right? And it is a, a very interesting subject matter. And unless you just lock down some, some folks and, and some brothers and sisters, you know, even amongst I and I are like, you know, we, we gone mad. We gone crazy to believe this, but then hold on for a moment, right? Let's look at the observable evidence. Have you noticed when you're at a, a, a particular height, whether on a roof or mountaintop or, you know, where you could look around, you could look down and look around. You notice that, The earth is always, right, flat, right? The earth is flat. Now, of course, there's buildings, you know, the land, the plain, the plain truth of the plain earth is that it's it's level and there's no spherical curve. Now, there is the the illusion 
that you might see with your eyes or really you really don't see with your eyes, but you imagine it because you've already been led to believe that the earth is a globe. See, because you've already been led to believe that the earth is a globe and you've seen globes and maybe you have a globe in your house, so forth and so on. You know what I mean? As a child, you grew up with this. For someone to say, no, it's not like that. It is more like a plane. You say, what? And it's not even just, there's a plane that unifies the fields, but it's many different planes. See, th- th- this is the thing about the plain truth about the plain earth, just in continuing to go forward with this reasonment, but also to make some very clear disclaimers. Because we would not like our brothers and, and sisters and others to think that, well, we're just buying into everything that ones and ones are putting out there about and concerning the so-called flat earth. In fact, from the very beginning, from the very first uh, couple of vids that we really did um, um, put forward with a, 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 a motive, a forethought, as it were. Right. Concerning this subject matter to really address this subject matter, because some of these things we, you know, kind of were addressing quietly in our own private research, because we was noticing that from the ancient scriptures, what were written in the ancient scriptures and getting past the 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 white Anglo-Saxon Protestant English um, matrix and getting more into the Afro-Shemitic, right? And the Gutters, you know, and like the Ethiopic and the Hebrew and even within some of the, um, cross, um, comparison studies within the ancient Egyptian or the Metunet, uh, as ones would call it. But the real root of that to, to decipher that the key to the ancient Metunet is really the Ethiopic. Right. It's really that Afro Shemitic, you know, the Akala Gutters, the Akala Gutters. We have a brother, Legacy Alen, who has gone into that very, very much. And, and, and bro, if you, if you're checking this out, I don't know if you have completed that work that you let me know you was working on, but definitely would like to, you know, get some communication from you and thank you for the other information that you shared. A brother named Legacy Alen has gone into a decipherment of the ancient Metuneta based on the Tigrinya and based on the Akala Gaz, right? Or Ethiopic, we say Ethiopian um, languages. And when you think about it for a moment, since the Nile River or the Hape, the Nahar, is the only one of the few rivers that actually go from south to north, right? And therefore it must pass through and some of the rivers actually begin with the mountains of the moon in what we would call ancient Tob or the good land, the Tob land, Tobia, which the Greeks upon hearing Tobia called it Ethiopia, right? So actually the term Ethiopia has an indigenous um, root and that is Tobia or the Tob land when Tob in the Hebrew means the good land. So the root of ancient, we could say of the Ancient Egyptian civilization, at least one of the, the true roots is the Ethiopic root, right? As we would, you know, refer to it. So in looking through some of these scriptures, right? Like the book of Enoch. And it's very clear when we look at the Bible, especially in the New Testament, right? That the New Testament writers and even, um, the Moshiach himself, Reboni Yeshua himself were quite familiar with and acquainted with these writings, these writings that in the Western Gentile world were, were, were lost, right? Until virtually maybe two, you know, maybe 200, two to 300 years ago. And these documents speak of the sun and even the moon as orbiting the sun and the moon as orbiting right over the plane earth or the earth plane that the sun and the moon orbits above the earth plane 
and this is also has been observable, right, by even so-called amateur, you know, astronomers and one sending up, you know, certain kind of um, high um, altitude like weather balloon type devices with cameras on it, actually seeing the sunspots on the cloud. Now, now the liars and deceivers would like to make us believe, well, that's just our perception of it. You know, that is really 93,000 miles so-called away. Well, that is not what we observe by natural scientia or natural scientia by natural science or, or knowledge or gnosis, right? You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now, this brings us to the, um, the heavens, right? See, the earth is a plane, but the heavens is a globe. The heavens turn. It's the heavens that turn around this plane or the plane earth, the earth plane. It's that it's the heavens. That's the globe. Right. This is what we have observed. And this is also what we can point to within the evidence that we have both ancient. Right. Martin and much of it. Right. Is observable. Right. Much of it is observable because we're not the first to look up and observe the heavens. Right. We're not the first to to look around. Right. And observe the earth. Right. Or to recognize the depths, uh, the amazing, we could say majesty. Right. Of the creation. See, it's, it's, it's about the creation. Right. It's about the, the blameless creator. Right. And in the scriptures, it's pointed out that he who created the heavens, the earth and the depths. Right. So these are three areas to look at. We have the heavens, we have the earth, and then we have the depths. I have the Tehillim right here. And Tehillim is the, you know, the Mizmor or the Psalms of David, right? In the Hebrew and an English translation. So when we go to Psalm 24, to just hear this right here, right? Right. As we seek to build on the ancient truth. And to see that the ancient truth is observable. You know, ones will say, well, this was just poetry. Well, yes, there, there, no doubt there was um, the spirit of, you know, the spirit of truth is poetic. They talk about poetic justice. Yes, the, the, the scriptures is poetic. And yes, there is an, a so-called allegorical, right, or um, a parabolical, a, a parable or a proverbial sense of a similitude, you know, we have the allegories, the likeness, right? The scriptures does contain that and even within the Hebrew, but it's also very scientific. This is what we want to point out, that not only is the Hebrew or the scriptures, especially when we're looking at the Hebrew, but even also the Greek, right? But first things first, get a good groundation right here. It says the earth is the Lord's. Right. The earth is the Yahweh's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He it says, for he hath founded it upon the seas. Hold up. Hold up for a moment. So the earth. It says the earth is the Yahweh's. Right. La Yahuwah Ha'eret. Right. La Yahuwah. La Yahweh Ha'eret. The earth is the Yahweh's, the he who be who he be. Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, right? Blessed be he, blessed be the name. U Meloa, U Meloa, U Meloa, and the fullness thereof, the fullness thereof. Tebel, Tebel, the inhabited, the inhabited regions, the Tebel. The world, as it says, the, the Tebel, right? The world and they that dwell therein. Where Yosh, Yosh Bay, where Yosh Bay Baha, where Yosh Bay Baha, and those that dwell in her, right? In her. So there's the Tebel. Now, when it says the earth is the Yahweh's, this is a, a noble preface that has a deep, deep meaning, right? Although Zion with, you know, Zion was his dwelling place, his presence, his, his, his sovereignty. 
extended throughout the world. The same thought occurred in the prayer that's offered, right, for the livication of Shlomo's Mikdash or, or, or Solomon's temple where he says, Behold, look, see, hine, look, sight, and that whole heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded in first Kings eight and 27, right? In eight and 27. So we're speaking about the Adonai, the Adonai of the universe. We're speaking about, um, Melech Ha'olam. We're speaking about the eternal king, right? We're speaking about the king of the universe. We're speaking about the universal God, the universal power, right? The true creator, right? The true creator, creator of the heavens, right? And the earth and also the deeps or the depths called the sea. So in verse two of Psalm 24, it says, for he hath founded it, he hath founded it upon the seas, he found it upon what? He found it upon the seas. Found it what? What, what is the it? The world, the tebel, right? The inhabited portions, right? The inhabited, the portions that are inhabited by men, by humanity, by human being, right? By human beings. He founded the earth. Notice this. And the world is founded upon the seas. Right, is founded upon the seas. Is this not the view that we can take a view of and we can verify, right, with our own observation? Yes, this is the view, right, as well as the point of view that is observable, right, with our own observation that we can observe this. We can, we can know this, right, for ourselves that yes, it might seem, and it is very poetical, right? The scriptures has its divine poetry, right? Because as we said, there's poetic justice. There is that harmony, right, in the truth. The truth is harmonious, you know? It's like when we come across, like when the brother had said a thing, dready, right? Dread from um, You've Been Exposed, the YouTube channel. When he said that when he was looking through, you know, um, he has a telescope, like I think a high grade, pretty quality, high grade telescope. And he was observing, he was looking at the so-called planets, right? And when he was looking at the planets, he noticed that it was like looking through water, right? It almost just appeared that the planets, so-called, right? Really, there's no such thing as, well, planet is a wandering star. Right? These are not wandering stars. That's why the earth is not a planet. It's a plane. We look at this word planet. We see this etymology when it first came into vogue, into usage. Also the science or the, the, the Euro pseudoscience, right? That was, that was, um, use, you know, this was all part of this conspiracy, this heliocentric, this, um, this kind of apostasy, this, this, this great deception, right? This great deception. As it says, the dragon, the serpent has deceived the whole world because the principle is as above, so below. Even the Messiah, Rabboni Yeshua, says that whatever you bind on earth, right, you bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. So now let's go into this right here, if we will, right, since we are here in the reasoning, let's go a little further and let's bring this up, right, just so you can see this, because it's, it's, it's very important for us to be able to see these truths, not saying that one has to, you know, you know, has to believe it, right, you know, or has to accept it, it it'd be good if one logically Right. And, and, and spirit and truth doesn't accept certain things and go and find the truth for themselves. Right. Now here, this is interesting. Here is Psalm 24. Right. We have a Psalm where it said that the psalmist, speaking of David, right, Dawid Hamalek, he affirms a universal kingship, right, of the sovereign creator reminds his people that only the morally pure are qualified to worship him, right? Are qualified to worship, who really recognize, right, what this is worth, what this is about, right? You know, 
and celebrates his splendor as a mighty warrior king. This is how this psalm is, is, is characterized right here. But let's look at this right here. Now, ones will say, what about this right here? Remember, we said that the heavens is a globe. The earth is a plane and the heavens is a globe, right? The earth is a plane and the heavens is a globe. So let's bring this up right here. So here we have Psalm 24, right? Psalm 24, a Psalm of David, right? A Mizmor le Dawid, right? A Mizmor. The earth, right? The earth, right? Let's get the word, the Eretz. Right, the Eretz. So we have the word Eretz, the earth. The earth is Yahweh. Right, the earth is Yahweh's. Buruku Buruk Hashem is he who be who he bees and the fullness thereof. The fullness. Right, the middle. Right, uh, the, her, all of her fullness thereof. The world. Now, here is interesting. Right, here is interesting. Because you'll see how a lot of this uh, false philosophy has even crept up, you know, into some of this right here. But if you do due diligence, you can see what is true from what has been, you know, added to it. Right. Perhaps like with a lot of us, we have been led to believe these things. Right. So here we have the table, the table. It says the earth as moist and therefore inhabited. So we had two words. We have the earth is the Lord's. Right. And it says the world, right? The world, the, the earth as moist and therefore inhabited. They say by extension, the globe. This is incorrect right here. Strike that out. By implication, it's it, it means the inhabitants, right? And it's speaking of the land, right? The habitable part, the part that's habited. So we have two terms. We have the earth. Notice this. The earth is Yahweh's, right? The earth is Jehovah's, right? The earth is Jehovah's, la Yahuwah ha Eretz, right? And the fullness thereof. Um lo aha, um lo aha, and all of her fullness, the world or the table, right? And they that dwell therein. Why Yosh Bey Baha. My, why, Yoshbe, Baha, and all those who sit therein. So let's go to this root here. Does this have anything to do with, with globe? Notice what the word means. You see how they, they inserted that there within the, the, um, Strong's concordance in the secondary way, right? To still try to eke in there that whole global. That global idea has to do with Baal and Baal, right? But here we have the H2986, Yabal, Yabal, right? What does Yabal mean? It means to flow, right? To flow causatively to bring, especially with pomp, right? So it means to bring, to carry forth, to flow. So we have Yabal. You know what Yabal, Yabal, right? We have Yabal, Yabal. You see Yabal here is a stream. It's a water course, a course, a stream, a water course. All right. Remember, we're looking at the Tebel. We have the antediluvian patriarch, Yabal. Right. Right. Then we have Yabel. Right. Yabel there. Now we go over here. We're getting into another word. Right. So the idea, the central idea. Right. The central idea we have for the the um the inhabited portions are the portions which are well watered right because man you know he can live a while without food you know for a moment but not you know without water right so here you see the first entry means to flow right to flow so so here we go right here to flow and then it can mean to bring right a stream, right? And then also Jubilee, Yabal, you know, um, Yobel, right? We also have that link right there, right? So maybe it sounds similar in English, right? Yobel, Yobal, Yabal, Global, right? But it's not the same, right? See, the whole global idea implies a ball, 
right, that the earth is a ball. But we can clearly see, right, on the two horizons, right, we can clearly see the flat horizon or the level horizon. So right here, this term for the world, right, is the tebel. The tebel is the earth, is the moist and the inhabited portions, Right, as we can clearly see that there are portions which are not inhabited. So when some of the inhabited portions, if we look at the ancient maps where they were green, you know, where it was green, where it was fertile, right? Because it was very hard to dwell in those areas like the desert or the cold, right? You know, areas very difficult. Now we have a couple of scriptures right there as a point of reference that reinforces the idea. Just take a snapshot of it and, you know, follow up on it as well. Right. But let's go to the next verse because the next verse is the real significant verse in establishing right this scriptural and biblical science. Here it says, for he hath found it. Right. So the word, um, Yasad, for he hath found it. He has done what? He has founded it upon the seas. Right. Kihu, Kihua al Yamim, al Yamim, ye sada, ye sada, ye sadaha, ye sada, for he hath founded Yasad. Right, Yasad means to set, literally or figuratively, in an intensive way to found, in a reflexive sense, is to sit down together, to settle, to consult. But he has said it so, for he has found it what? He has found it, right, the earth and the world, the Eretz, right, and the Tebel, right, the inhabited portions, Right, the moist portions, he has founded it upon the seas, upon the yam, right, upon the yam. What is the yam? What is the yam? Right, so here we're in Psalm 24, right, to establish, right, that the earth, right, the earth is founded, right, on, we can say, for lack of a better word, should we say the celestial waters? Right, or waters, there's water, water everywhere. There is water below the the Eretz, the Tebel, and there is water above. Right? There is water above. It says he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. So we have Kihu, Kihu al Yamim, right? Yamim Ye Sadaha. Ye Sadaha. So the yam, right? What is the yam? It's a sea. As breaking in noisy surf, or it's a large body of water. You see right here? A large body of water. You see large bodies of water. All right? Remember, there's water below. There's water above. There is, according to the scripture and also the observation, water all around. Secondarily, specifically with the article, when it has the article Hayam, they say it's in reference to the Mediterranean Sea. The third entry, sometimes it can also refer to a large river or an artificial basin. Right. Fourthly, locally, the West or really, right, or really the South, right, really the South. Now, they say it's from an unused root. They say meaning to roar. Right. So this word is translated as sea, uh, maybe a seafaring man, seashore, South, uh, West, Western, Westward. Right. Notice this right here. You see the you see in the King James translates this as south as well as western or the west side, westward, western. Look over here. This is the east, right? This is Ethiopia, Africa. This is the far east, you know, so-called far east Africa, the Middle East, this area. So you come over here. This is South America. This is America, right? Over in the west. So we were over here, came through over here, ended up over here, spread through the Americas, South America, North America, the Caribbean, beyond roughly right about here 
if you can see where we're at right there. Let's see if we zoom in, right? But if we look to the West, right? That's why if you look at the flight patterns, it's interesting, the flight patterns. Because if you look at a globe, if you look at a globe, on a globe, this is Australia. Australia is not that far from um, the West Coast of America, right? Australia is not that far from the West Coast of America, right? But... The, this is the area they call the ring of fire too. Notice this is the area they call the ring of fire. Have you ever wondered? There's a ring of fire under all this water. What? So tell us that, that there's a ring of fire underneath all this water. Wow. <laughs> and all the water, no matter how much water there is, it doesn't out this ring of fire. But notice right here where it says, for he have founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Upon the seas, the word here, the yamim, right? The yamim, not just the yam, not just a sea, right? Not just a large body of water, but the large bodies of water. So literally it's saying upon the large bodies of water, look how very large from a true, this is like an Enochian view. This is how Hanok was able to cite it, right? From, from this sort of view, right? Even NASA and them, right? And NASA, they can't get up to that sort of a height, right? They barely can get up to that sort of a height, right? To really observe because it's the firmament. Remember, there's a firmament and that firmament separates the waters below from the waters above the firmament. So basically what we have is water, water, water everywhere. This is an observable right, fact. Right? This is an experiential fact. Right? So here in Psalm 24... Right in Psalm 24, the seas, the floods, the world, the Tebo was thought of as resting upon subterranean waters. From the most ancient of times, the the world or the Tebo. Remember, there's the Eretz. There's the Eretz, translates the earth, right? Or we could say the land and the Tebo. The Tebel is the inhabited regions, the moist regions. These are the regions that have greenery, right? That's what it's speaking about. The Tebel is the green, right? The places that have greenery, right? Or have moisture, right? Have water, right? Because then we have the drier parts. They are also the part of the Eretz, right? So there's two terminologies used in Psalm 24 where it says the earth is the Yahweh's is Jehovah's and the fullness thereof. La Yahuwah Eretz Uma Loah, right? The world and they that dwell therein, right? Tebel, where Yoshbei Baha, where Yoshbei Bah, the Tebel, right? The Tebel, they translated as, as, um, world. Right. And as we showed you before, they try to insert as a second entry, the pseudo, the pseudonym, the false name globe. But then when we go into the root, right, when we go into the root word and the root idea of that word, we find it has to do with the flow and the streams and the waters, right? The waters, the large body of waters and the flowing waters, Right, large body of waters and the flowing waters and establish it, right, and establish it. It says right here, establish it upon the floods. Where all Neharot, where all Neharot, ye, 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 Right, Yekonene established her. Right, establish her. Now we're just gonna point to these two verses right here in Psalm twenty-four, verse one and verse two. Right, verse one and verse two. Right, verse one and verse two. Right, and we can see this very clearly right here. Let's look at the word floods. Right, the word floods. Right, Naharot, right, the Naharot, the streams, 
including the sea. So we have the big waters, right? And then in the land masses and under the land masses, right? We have the, the streams, the floods, especially this is in reference to the Nile, that particular region and the Euphrates, but it also in a figure of speech, Right. Figuratively in the, in the allegorical sense. So this word in the Hebrew both has direct reference points and then they also have their figurative sense. Right. So in this direct sense is speaking of a stream, including the sea. This is why we have this so very, very much connected right here where it says, for he have founded it upon the seas, founding it. Right. Setting it upon the seas and establishing it. Right. Or establishing her. Literally it says her. Right. Within the Hebrew and the Afro-Shemitic her. Right. Upon the floods and the Harot. Right. Naharot, the streams. And specifically, we have over here the Nile between the two rivers. We have the Nile, which goes up from South Africa all the way up along here. And then over here, we have the Euphrates. Right. Speaking of the direct, that direct region. Right. But then in a figurative sense, it can refer to prosperity. Right. And this is from the root 5102 Nahar. It means to sparkle, sparkling what spring water, water springing up from the depths. Right. Figuratively to be cheerful. Nahar. Right. Hence from the sheen of running stream of a running stream. Right. So you ever see a running stream and there's that sheen that, you know, that sparkle. Right. To flow. This idea of to flow and in a figurative sense is to assemble. So we have an ancient, a primitive, in the sense of a good is a ancient, a first word or a prime root, a prime root. KJV translates this word elsewhere to flow, to flow together and to be enlightened. Right. From the idea of the sheen of a running stream to flow. Right. And the sense of to sparkle. But let's look at this. The verb here to establish. Right. To establish. Let's look at the coon. Right. People talk about coon. Right. Well, the coon. Right. The coon is the root word right here. Ain't that interesting. But we have ye con. Yekoneneha, Yekoneneha, Yekoneneha. What is Yekoneneha? Yekoneneha is that she is kuned, right? She is kuned. She is erected, stand perpendicular, right? We have perpendicular. Get to this root right here, kun. This is the Hebrew kun, right? Or kawan, kun, the H3559. Right. For he have founded upon the seas and establish. Right. And establish her. Right. And, um, Yekone Neha. Yekone Neha. He's established her, hence causatively to set up in a great variety of applications. Right. And we see a great variety of that application of the blameless creator in the creation and the different land and the water. And you notice how how creation is created. Right. How the blameless creator has created, whether in the literal sense to establish, to fix, to prepare, to apply or in the figurative sense to appoint, to appoint, to render sure to be proper or prosperous, right? Proper or prosperous, right? So we see this root word right here. So just in these first, right? In these first two, we can say verses here, where we're speaking of the creation of the world, the establishing, some people will say it's just the ocean currents, but it goes much deeper just want to say this for the record, it goes much deeper than just that. But all of that is actually embedded in the sense when we look at the Hebrew, right, hieroglyphs. You know, is when we look at both the Peshat reading and then we study the key words, right, and studying the key words. We can clearly see this aspect, right, this face. That's why in the scripture it often refers to the face 
of the earth, right? The face of the earth. You notice that? The face of the earth. The four corners, right? Notice also says the four corners of the earth. Some say that's the four cardinal directions of the earth. So then didn't know we was gonna get into that right there, but that that is a, a interesting observation in the Psalms, right? In the Psalms, and we can go into even other ancient cultures, right, where they praise the creation and the creator and the creation. And some things were observable, right? But then when the language often gets more some people say will be abstract. Part of the reason why, to a certain degree, working from what was clearly seen and known, they went to the abstract level of it is because you have to think about this, that even NASA and, and the men and the people and the, and the principalities and the powers that be gone, the powers that be, even they have not. This is why they have lied to folks. You know, concerning the so-called globe and the different uh, CGIF and also what the planet so-called look like. But then anyone who has a, even a high grade telescope and look at it will clearly recognize one is looking at these light planes as if through water, right? as if through another medium. Also explains why, you know, the so-called astronauts, you know, with their practice in water. Right. Because there are waters. So the scripture, the Hebrew um, Torah, right, and the Hebrew Bible, right, and what Moshe being learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, what he has disclosed to us is right and exact. But see, we have to study this. Right. And see, in studying this also, it's important to have to come out of that Western, that white Western, white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, Gentile mind. And and see, we're pointing this out not against so much the men and people, but the way of thinking. Right. You know, you know how ones have so-called been led to thunk it, so to speak. Now, people say, well, why do we have this here? Because in looking at this, if, if you notice this right here, this right here. Right is this, right? This right here is also this, right? But this, the circle right here, right? The circle is the circle of the heavens, right? It's the circle of the heavens. This also can be verified, right, by a contextual and accurate study of both ancient scriptures and texts, such as we could say the Hebrew Torah, but also in ancient, in ancient uh, Mitzrayim. Or so called Kemet or, uh, or Kermet in ancient Kermet. Actually, if you read the glyphs properly, it'll be Kermet, not Kemet, Kermet. But anyway, in ancient Egypt and the Banai Mitzrayim, they also understood this. All of the ancients understood, right, that the heavens, right, turn. The heavens is a globe, right, and the earth is a plane. Right. The earth is a is a plane. It's like a unified field, actually. Right. A unified field because there are planes in that unified field or there are planes in that plane. Right. This is the plain truth of the earth. This is why with the flat earth. Right. Um, agenda. You know, we kind of pull back off of that and say that, well, the earth is not flat, flat. But what is clear even observably is the the level right horizon or we can say even the flat horizon the level horizon this is very clear both in a modern observation and even when we look at um from an ancient right uh, ancient perspective whether we go to ancient Mitzrayim the ancient Egyptians and ones who tell you that the Egyptians believe that the earth was a ball or something they're lying to you right because we've shown you um basic evidence and if you interpret it right you know you know this basic evidence right here right you know this is some basic some basic facts right here right these are some basic facts right here you know that can be reviewed for oneself. So in speaking about the firmament, right? And speaking about the ark, right? It is the heavens that turn. The heavens turn around the plane or the earth plane. The heavens turn around the earth plane. The earth 
as Psalm 24 so clearly, right? Psalm 24 so clearly articulates. Let's go over it one more time. A Psalm of David. The earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. The world or the Tebel, right? And they that dwell and they that dwell therein, right? Le Dawid Mizmor, La Yahua Ha Eretz, Uma Loaha Tebel, We Yosh Bey Bah. For he hath founded it, or more correctly, founded her. If you read the Hebrew, founded her, for he hath founded her upon the seas and establish her upon the floods, right? He have founded her, so the earth plane, right, is founded upon the yamim, right, upon the yamim, upon the seas and the large bodies of water, right, is founded, is yasad, is set, is founded, right, upon the large bodies of water, the Yamim, and establish, right, Yekono Neha, right, Yekono Neha, he's, he's cooned her, he's established her, right, upon the Naharot, upon the floods. And blessed be he who be who he be. Hak Adosh Baruch Hu.